Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up today I have a brand new model from Hornby to unbox for you and I think technically this will be my first ever review of a proper full sized coach. Alright, technically that's not true. I think even though today's model looks a lot like a coach, I think it's technically considered a van. So maybe this is still not the first proper coach review I've done, but it does kind of resemble a coach. So yeah, maybe you could consider it a coach. It doesn't really matter. Who cares, quite honestly. The model is this. This is brand new. It's only just come out. It is new tooled, I believe, and it is a Southern Railway luggage van. And I could not resist picking one of these up. They do quite a few different versions. I've got the Southern Green one as you can see I think there's a BR version there's a Pullman version I think Hornby have also produced the Winston Churchill hearse version of this that was quite tempting as well now I mean coaches these days are quite expensive okay I think we've had to come to terms with that we haven't got a choice however these are not too bad this has an RRP of £36.99 which while expensive is a little bit less than you might expect to pay for a coach these days and I bought mine from derails models for £33.29 29. So yet again, that's another good deal and a good service from Derails Models, hashtag not sponsored. So we'll find out what this is like. I mean, to me, this is still a lot of money, so my expectations are quite high. But looking through the front of the box, I am confident that this will be quite an impressive model. To find out for sure, we're going to take a close look at this today together and see what it's like. OK, here we go. So these vans came to be in the mid to late 1920s, which of course does make them suitable for most Southern Railway modelers, unless you're modeling sort of really early Southern. But yeah, Southern, BR, whatever, anything like that, these should be absolutely fine. Mine is the Southern one, as you can see in the green. And so far, I'm really, really impressed with what I've seen of this through the front of the window. Let me show you the end of the box then, because I went for R60020A. It is Southern Railway GBL luggage van and it's number 2471. And yeah, taking a peek through the front of the box, the level of detail or what you might call the resolution of detail on this model looks absolutely insane. I really can't wait to crack out my close-up lens on this just to take a really good look at some of the fidelity in the detailing here. Yeah, it really does look phenomenal. So let's find out whether this is any good. Just over 30 quid. Let's see. Right, I really should do more of this, shouldn't I? Um, I know this is technically not a coach, but I would like to actually do some proper coaches at some point. So if you've got any recommendations of uh, what's good, do comment them down below. Anyway, there is an accessories bag inside here. So let's take a look. There are some weird shaped things that I don't quite recognize there. And I don't believe there is any paperwork to explain what those are for. So I guess I could take a close look at the model and see if it becomes apparent, but otherwise got no idea. Comment below if you do. I do recognise the other parts though they just look like uh, vacuum pipes for the buffer beams which are clearly not pre-fitted. So yep yeah, that's fair enough. Right let's have a look at the van. I keep wanting to say coach but I think van is definitely more correct on this occasion. Let's take a look then. All right. So yeah it doesn't really look much like a coach. It seems quite slim which is interesting. All right let's take a close look then. So yeah, now that I've got this in my hand, I'm not changing my tune. The level of detail on this does look absolutely wonderful. Look at all the detailing on the side there. And it looks as though quite a bit of that is separately fitted as well. So that could explain some of the expense. It is quite a light model though, it must be said. I don't believe the underframe is die cast or anything like that. Maybe it would be unreasonable to expect that. Although, of course, Dapple have showed that we, we can start to expect a bit of die cast on rolling stock which of course just gives you a little bit more of what you've paid for and a little bit more weight and sturdiness to the models. However, it's not going to be a big deal with this. The model feels pretty sturdy straight away. I'm not feeling any really tiny parts which are sort of flexing and crumbling under my fingers. So overall, first impressions are really, really good of this. So I'll give you some close-ups of this. We'll take a look at the level of detail and then I guess later on I'll get this running and we'll see how it performs. Right, looking forward to this. Should be fun. 
This is a lovely piece of rolling stock. It really, really is. The level of detail is fantastic. It's really nicely decorated. The quality is pretty good. It's assembled nice and carefully. Yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with this. It is a little bit lightweight. It comes in at just a hair over 100 grams, 102 grams to be precise. Little bit light, but not a major concern. So let's take a close look at this then. So the decoration is pretty good. They've used a nice rich shade of green for the bulk of the body, which I think looks really, really nice. You can't beat Southern rolling stock as far as I'm concerned. The roof is not separately fitted. That's part of the same piece, I believe. However, as you can see, it is very, very carefully decorated, almost to the point where you would believe that that was a separately molded piece. The only thing that gives it away is the tiniest amount of paint bleed around the ends, which is not a complaint or anything because it's still done really, really well by most standards, but it does give away that the roof was painted in situ and not as a separately fitted piece. But what I'm saying is that it's been done excellently. The Southern Railway lettering is nice. There's quite a few different colors used in the Southern Railway font there, which is good. And you've also got separately tampo printed the running number, the luggage sign, the, the luggage sign, and there are one or two prints on the underframe as well, which you can see are done nicely. The framework that you can see inside the windows is just printed onto the glazing pieces, I believe. You don't have actual plastic bars or anything like that, which I suppose takes away some of the depth of the windows, but it's really not a big deal because they're such small pieces. The underframe is quite interesting. In fact, the underframe was interesting in real life because these started out as LSWR coaches, I believe, but then those coaches were converted into EMUs, which left the chassis or the underframes of the coaches spare. And then the Southern Railway repurposed them for these vans. So yeah, these are actual underframes of LSWR coaches, which is fairly interesting. And this is where the bulk of the detail is. You can see we've got separately fitted pipework underneath here, which is well separately fitted as well. I mean, my fingers were touching that and they weren't flexing or anything like that. So it's not an overly fragile model. You've got the separately fitted turning wheels here, which again are nicely fitted to the body. The bogey detail is quite unbelievable, actually. Quite a few separately fitted parts there. And again, you've got molded all of the usual axle boxes and the suspension springs and such. Really, really nice bogies, actually. And there is a huge amount of fidelity in the underframe, as you can see. Loads and loads of molded detail and quite a lot fitted to the very underside as well, as you can see. Lots of details protrude down. Really sell the effect, don't they? They look fantastic. On the end, you've got these separately fitted metal steps. Yep, those are metal, very good quality. We've got metal buffers and take a look at this. They are indeed sprung. What a nice feature. So yeah, they have pulled out quite a few of the stops on this piece of rolling stock, haven't they? The couplings are NEM and they are free to pivot, as you can see, very, very free to pivot, I should add. So I can't see those being a problem. They seem to be well designed. Around the ends proper, you can see, again, nice moulded texture going on, separately fitted metal handrails, separately fitted lamp irons, more printed detail. The doors themselves are separately decorated. Just looks like someone's front door, doesn't it? <laughs> the wood colour. And then you've got these nice corridor connectors, which are not uh, rubberized or anything like that. They are static, but they do look pretty good, I must say. On the side of the wagon, the level of moulded detail is really very impressive. You can see all of the panelling, you've got riveting, all sorts of different components molded on there. And some of them are separately fitted as well. As you can see, if you look at the doors, the handles and the grab rails around the doors, those are all separately fitted and quite tidily as well. There's not very much in the way of glue overspill there, which is great. And then up on the roof, again, you can see you've got these sort of little air intakes and other molded parts. Yeah, everywhere you look, there is detail. And for something that costs much less than 40 pounds, it's not too bad. It's not too bad given what a coach usually costs. And as you can see, you do have metal wheels, and that's pretty much a standard, but I guess it's worth pointing it out. So overall, very, very nicely detailed. Like I say, it's decorated very well. The weight is a little bit on the low side, but I can't see it causing too much of a problem. Now I'll get it down onto the track. I will film some rolling tests, find out how free wheeling this is. And then the part I'm really looking forward to is seeing how this looks as part of a Southern Railway train. And I think that's the main reason why you would want to buy something like this, just because it will add a little bit of variation into an otherwise uniform rake of coaches, and it'll just spice up the rake a bit, won't it? So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Let's do it. I'll be back with you in just a second. 
The luggage van is down onto the track for the first time and this is my test setup. I've chosen the N15 Loco or the King Arthur class to test this with uh, because the liveries match as you can see. And then of course behind the van I've got a rake of coaches which don't really match in terms of colour but they do match in terms of couplings so that should be a fair test. The bad news is that my example is not a very free runner. In fact, multiple axles do seem quite stiff on this one. And sure enough, I did try the Gordon's Hill test and I had real trouble getting this to run. I gave it a few different chances. Well, it barely got underneath the passenger footbridge, which I think makes this the worst rolling piece of rolling stock I've ever reviewed, possibly. Yeah, I mean, this has one job. Yeah, it's a piece of rolling stock. It's supposed to roll. It's not absolutely awful. I mean, it's not like it's got the brakes full on, but it doesn't roll as well as it ought to. That's what I will say. The gauging is perfect, though. 14.4 millimeters back to back on all counts. That is absolutely perfect. Now then, let's test the coupling on the straight, so I'm going to back up the N15 to couple to the van. There we go, that's a perfect coupling to the van from the loco, as you can see. There we go. And now let's couple to the coaches. All right, and there we go, I've got my wish. I now have the van coupled as part of the train. All right, we'll leave that to go. Up to 40% speed, something like that. So, just for your entertainment, I'm going to be running just a couple of other Southern Locos today on the other lines. On the middle line, I have what I would still consider my favourite locomotive at the moment. It is the unrebuilt Merchant Navy class. There we go, got there in the end. With some lovely blood and custard coaches, always a fan of those. So, yep, yeah, there goes that one. And then, on the inside line, it is another one of my favourites. It is the Schools class, again, with some matching Southern coaches. So, let's catch up with the luggage van and find out how it's getting on. So, it does indeed look lovely as part of a train. It's just a bit of variety, isn't it, to be honest? And if I had a matching rake, well, if I put it with a, a matching rake, I think it'd look even better. But yeah, as you can see, it's handling the curves all right, which means it does what it's supposed to. The couplings, obviously coupled right, so it does what it's supposed to as far as the couplings are concerned. So, except for the slightly stiff wheels, I can give this a pretty much glowing review. I mean, it looks wonderful, does what it's supposed to do, didn't cost the earth. Yeah, overall, I think this is a really, really lovely piece of rolling stock, and I might even be tempted to pick up one of the different versions, the Winston Churchill uh, edition, whatever you want to call it, the one that carried uh, Churchill's body um, for his funeral, as I understand it. That would be quite a nice thing to own, actually, wouldn't it? So, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a thumbs up. Definitely a thumbs up. What a lovely, lovely van. Here come my ratings then for the newly tooled Hornby Southern Railway luggage van. The level of detail, there's nothing for it but to give five stars. I was really, really impressed. The decoration is great, loads and loads of separately fitted parts, there's even sprung buffers. Yeah, it's a great, great level of detail, easily deserving of five star. The performance is pretty good, it runs very nicely, it must be said. However, yeah, there is that issue with the wheels being a little bit too stiff for my liking, so it does lose just one star for that. Quality, again, nothing wrong with the quality, very few glue marks, very careful decoration application, which is all very, very good. I did think the model was a little bit light at just 102 grams, so perhaps a bit of die cast, a bit more weight would have made this a little bit better quality, and of course a little bit more worth the money. However, at an RRP of £36.99 and an approximate retailer price of around £33, that's not too bad, especially when you consider that the Hornby four-wheeled coaches are only a few pounds cheaper and this model is much less rushed, it's got much more detail to it and it looks quite a lot better than they do. So yeah, the value for money is not too bad at all. It's not a bargain or anything, but yeah, I think four star is very reasonable. Overall then, that is 8.71 out of 10. That's a pretty decent score. Let's put that into the logbook and it's faring pretty well. Second place, just below the Dapol Turbot Wagon and above the Oxford Rail 12 ton tankers. Overall, a great job from Hornby. I can highly recommend it. So there you have it, folks. I would say that is a success. And I'm very, very pleased with my purchase at the end of the day. 
I guess I've just got to remember now that I've got it and that I should include it in a train from time to time. Not every time, because then I guess the novelty of it would be lost, but just, you know, one in five trains or something like that. That will make a really, really nice change, and I think I and everybody else will enjoy seeing it. So, yeah, I'm pretty darn happy. Uh, comment below, let me know what you think. Have you got one? What's your experience? What are the other liveries like that Hornby have done for this? Yeah, I would be interested to know. For now though, thank you very, very much for your company. Thank you for watching and I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right, you take care of yourselves, folks. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.